What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here of The Quartering, checking in from the Pretty Bear, still new set. But importantly, we have our own set, distinguished from Unsleeved Media now, and that is cause for celebration. And I thought I would ring in the new set with a more of a basic review, a look at how Shill Media is treating yet another all-female reboot of a movie nobody asked for. So if you have watched, and you may or may not have heard, uh, the movie Ocean's Eleven has been remade with an all-female cast. And as you know, when you remake the same movie and you just turn all the males into females, it becomes something amazing. And some of the reviews are starting to come out now. And I wanted to point out it's the exact same trend as when they did this to Ghostbusters. Now, I think people didn't react as negatively to the Ocean's Eleven remake as Ocean's Eight simply because people didn't love that movie like they did Ghostbusters. When Hollywood buttfucked Ghostbusters with the all-female cast, people got genuinely pissed. When they remade... Um, Ocean's Eleven, I feel like it was more like them remake, them doing like Soilo, uh, a movie nobody asked for with a cast nobody liked. And so nobody is going to see it. This movie is set to be a colossal bomb. And I want to make a few predictions uh, when it does bomb and it will. And Warner Brothers will lose a ton of money on this film based on the all star cast. And I'm sure that they paid people like Sandra Bullock, 20, $30 million to be in this film, the articles will start to come out about how uh, people in America, you know, and across the world just aren't woke enough to want to see an all-female powerful cast. And at least one of the C-level actresses in this film, so not Sandra Bullock, but it'll be uh, like um, that Indian chick, from uh, um, The Office, or it'll be like, uh, yeah, Mindy Kaling, or it'll be like uh, Anne Hathaway, although she's not really C-list. Um, they will, of course, come out and say that they were harassed online and that all these bad things were happening to them, and that will take every all the attention away from the box office bomb. Now, when you look at the cast in Ocean's 8, they spent money. Sandra Bullock, Kate Blanchett, Anne Hathaway. These are all expensive movie stars. You bring in Helen Bonham, Mindy Kaling, and Rihanna. They're probably more like C or D list. A uh, little less expensive. But nonetheless, plenty of money went into the uh, casting of this monstrosity. And let's just take a little look at... Uh, I want to start with Ocean's Eleven to show you, just in comparison, when we look at the ratings, for example. Uh, here we have all time. The tomato meter was in an 82. I think that's probably a fair score. It was a good movie, uh, a good fun ride, but nothing amazing. And the audience agreed with 32,000 votes. Uh, that's pretty strong. I would say that's a significant uh, sample size that people at the time when this came out in 2001 uh, enjoyed the film right now let's look at Oceans 8 we have this has actually gone down this was at 85 last night when I wanted to do this video it was higher they rated it higher but to put it on the same scale even as Ocean's Eleven is hilarious when you start to look at some of the reviews. Now, there's only 1,800 people that voted on this that said they wanted to see it. 84% is still pretty high. Uh, when you look at something like Solo, uh, that was in the 60s at one time. Uh, and even if we look at it now, 65 audience liked it. And they still certify it fresh. Can you believe that? Like, they... Ugh. Anyway, this is a different film. My point is, let's take a look at some of the reviews that are coming in, and you tell me if uh, the media is uh, giving playing with uh, kid gloves on this film. So we saw that this thing 
uh, the reviews are in for Ocean's Eight. Uh, I've got I I got served this this morning on on Twitter because you know why wouldn't Twitter want to promote this film? Vox, let's be honest. You're going. You're not. Ugh, you're going to see Ocean's Eight for its all star cast. That cast does not disappoint. No, actually, I'm not going to see it for its cast. Uh, I'm not going to see it because I already sa saw the movie with, in Ocean's Eleven and all the subsequent uh, uh, follow-ups. Then we have LA Entertainment. Sandra Bullock and Kate Blanchett and Rihanna and whatever. Uh, who is this? Aquafina. And more. Pull off an enjoyable low-fizz heist in Ocean's 8. Okay, that doesn't sound like an endorsement. Anne Hathaway steals Ocean's 8. If only the rest of it was as much fun. Again, these are all people who rated the movie as something you wanted to see, right? That doesn't sound like a fun movie. Uh, Vanity Fair. There's no disaster here. No regrettable misfire to be changed about. Phew. That said, I do wish Ocean's 8 were a little more than just fun. So again, nothing unique about the film. And even the people who shill for Hollywood uh, aren't even giving it good reviews. What these are, are the, they're hedge reviews. The reviews that, yes, the movie was not good, but I'm not going to dare say anything negative about this female-led cast. Far, far from a perfect movie. Ocean's 8 is still worth your time. It's like, it's like, on one hand, they're like, eh, it's not very good, but you should still spend your money on it. Uh, this is indicative of exactly what the, me the shill media did for Ghostbusters when it came out. Um, Ocean's 8 is sleek, different, and a lot of fun. The ensemble is the best part. I wanted more of everyone. Again, this is not a positive review. This is, I already like these actresses and I didn't care for the movie. I mean, the list goes on and on. Ocean's 8 review. Starry cast can't steal enough attention in the all-female reboot. Again, I cared about the cast. I didn't care about the movie. None of these reviews mention anything about how the plot was good or how the special effects were good or how the story was good or how the dialogue was good. It's all about just the woman, Daily Beast. Anne Hathaway steals Ocean's 8. If only the rest was as much fun. <laughs> Again, Ocean's 8 is good, but it could have been great. It could have been great. I, this is all shill media. Here's AV Club, the caper comedy. Ocean's 8 is... More knockoff than spinoff. <laughs> but if we look at the reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, 78%. These things don't jive. In fact, the average rating here is a 6.4 out of 10. That's really curious to me because I know I don't necessarily understand how Rotten Tomatoes works, but if this is how they do it, 47 people said it was fresh. 13 people said it was rotten. So that must be, you know, how they pick up the percentage. But the average rating is actually a 64%. That's even lower than Soilo. And if you read these reviews, it's more of the same. A gaggle of stars saunter their way through lighthearted, velvet-lined shenanigans. But rather fittingly, the movie only delivers three quarters of the Ocean's Eleven panache. This is a Joe Everyman review. I know when my dad looks at reviews, he's like, I want movies with panache. You can turn your brain off watching Ocean's Eight. Either way, you'll still have a blast and be counting the days until the next job. Uh, again, this is like, there's nothing interesting about the movie, but you'll still want to see it. I don't, under I don't understand this review. I don't understand. I, I don't. It features glamorous celebrities having a ball as they plan an elaborate heist that will dazzle you not only with being stolen, with what's being stolen, but how the crew managed to steal it. Spoiler alert! It doesn't break the mold as much as it remakes in a new image. Exactly! And how do you rate this fresh? 
This is not a unique film. It's just with Wamen. Now, usually I trust YouTube to tell me what's going on, what people really think. And <laughs> 100,000 upvotes, 107,000, 57,000 downvotes. So more than half don't like this trailer. The comments, if I don't see this movie, it's not because it's female-led. It's because James Corden is in it. That's solid. Coming soon, no country for old woman. I'm getting feminist vibes. How to ruin a classic franchise. This. There are no Hispanic or Native American women in the cast. Racist. Oh, great. Another all-female reboot because Ghostbusters turned out great. Here we go. Another feminist, politically correct destruction of a great movie franchise like Ghostbusters once again. This is going to suck just like the new Ghostbusters. And it is going to suck. Hollywood is completely out of ideas except for cramming ideology, cramming representation down people's throat. Now, I happen to be a fan of Sandra Bullock. I always thought she's she's pretty spicy, a sexy lady uh, who commands a very high salary for her films, whether they're good or not. But she's not enough of a reason to see this movie. In fact, she's done a lot of really shitty movies lately, just getting paid, and I can't hold that against her. But it's funny to watch. We can chart this narrative, right? Every positive review basically wasn't positive because they're afraid to say it sucked. And then you're going to see about the narrative shift after opening weekend and it bombs and the reviews come in that it was men's fault, that this country isn't ready for an all-female cast, that we're sexist, that we're bigoted. And you could also sprinkle in a little bit about how uh, this one... Uh, Indian chick is going to end up getting some sort of level of online harassment uh, for for being uh, not good, for not being in a good movie. Same thing that we saw with Solo. We saw just yesterday the Rose Tico harassment come out. It's all about changing the narrative, about saying, well, the movie didn't suck. We didn't. People didn't want to leave their house. Where I, where I live, it's $15 to see a movie. So if I go with a little lady, that's 30 We buy popcorn and soda. Now we're up to 50 bucks For the price of a brand new video game, am I going to go see a movie that does nothing original and only replaces men with women? Or vice versa, okay? If it was an all-female cast the first time around, I wouldn't go pay to see it if it was now all of a sudden the same movie, but all men. People want to see original ideas. This is the reason Solo failed. This is the reason this movie's going to fail. This is the reason most reboots fail. People think, I'm just going to hearken on the existing uh, fans of the Oceans franchise or of the Star Wars franchise. They give us no credit as a fandom. I don't give a shit if the movie's called Star Wars. If it doesn't look good, I'm not going to go see it. I don't give a shit if the movie's called Ghostbusters. If it doesn't look good, I'm not going to see it. The same thing goes for Ocean's 8, which will be a hilarious box office bomb.